The U.S. being an underdog at the Collins Cup, we're regarded as an underdog for a reason. Our rankings are lower. We can look at the numbers, see what's on paper, say who's going to win the Collins Cup, but what's the fun in that? This is the first ever Collins Cup. All the greatest athletes are here. Team Europe. Team Internationals. Team US. For the first time in history, the road to the Collins Cup starts here. Hard work is more important than raw talent. Talent can be outworked. So I just know personally, if I'm willing to put out that hard work output, I will do what I want to do, accomplish what I want to accomplish. I feel like everything I've done in my life has been a result of hard work. And it hasn't been easy, and it hasn't been handed to me at all. You can't dwell on, on bad things, things you can't control. These are my most valuable riding tools. Daytime running lights. They're really bright. It helps me feel safe. I think I'm just proud of being an athlete who, like, don't count me out in any race, like I'm gonna to be towards the front of the race and in contention, if not for the win, then the podium. Yes, yes, Sky is, has an amazing internal process, I think. She handles the hard things or the blows as, as well as she handles the good things, the wins. She has a great ability to just move past, learn and move past and not dwell in it. So I won the 2019 Ironman European Championship in Frankfurt. And then a month later, I won Boulder 70.3. We have a lot of work to do, so. I mean, I was on the podium like every race I did that year. But then obviously my mind shifted for my first world championship in Kona. I was kind of on the up and getting recognized. And then I crashed my bike. It was September 24th, 2019. I had done a big swim in the morning and then did a four hour bike ride. There was no reason to think anything bad would happen. I was literally 20 minutes away from being finished being home. And I didn't make it home. I w didn't even make it 800 meters and I crash and I, I don't actually know exactly what happened. We have theories based on just kind of like the condition of the bike and things like that, but I don't remember any of it. The next thing I remember was someone had picked me up. I'd asked him probably 30 times already if this was real life. He said I just kept asking him, is this real life? I have one brief memory. It was like sun was coming through the trees Otherwise, I, I really didn't come to until I was in the ER. Just a freak thing. It was a freak thing. I mean, the first thing I thought was, I'm so glad I'm alive. That's all I was thinking about, like, the first probably 48 hours. And then I think the reality set in of, like, what this really meant for me. So yeah, my entire upper body, like, I was useless. It was crazy. 
Skye is very resilient. She can take any situation she's in and she will make the best of it. She'll, she'll come out of it on top. Old treadmill workouts, can't do those right now. You know, obviously, physically it was tough. But again, like, I didn't linger on it because I just knew it probably was just gonna take time. Physically, I, I really didn't let myself get that frustrated, I don't think, because I just knew if I worked hard, things would go back to normal as much as possible. See? I'm freaking back on Zwift. Which I don't know that anything will ever be 100% the way it was before, but it's like the new me. And my heart is so high. Getting back to being able to take care of myself and do the things I love, I can show everyone that I'm, I'm still performing and then we're back on the path I was on. It was hard, don't get me wrong, but yeah, I don't think my crash was the hardest thing I've gone through. I think my experiences as a child and what that did for me, I think it's just given me a really good perspective of what, what's actually hard in life and what's not. I don't, I don't think people know a lot about me or, or I mean, why would they? It's not like I broadcast that my dad tried to kill my mom, you know? Like, yeah. I mean, I, I got married really young and it was very unstable. There was abuse going on at times. It's like life was kind of always on edge. I lived in fear of my dad. I grew to be afraid of what he would do to my mom. There were a few incidences where knowing that they were talking so intensely, I was like afraid. I was just like, something could happen. I was 11 or 12 the first time that happened. There um, was an extremely violent attack. I heard my mom, they were talking, and then I like heard my mom scream, and like, so then I wrote, like ran up to her room and like my my dad was like strangling her. So that was like one time where I was like, is my mom dead? Like literally. Like it takes kind of moments like these thinking about it, being like, oh my gosh, that's not normal. That's not what an eighth grader should be dealing with. The thing that people don't realize too is that women in this situation, the most dangerous time is actually leaving that person. And frankly, for the kids too, that can be a very dangerous time. We drove, like my grandparents, me, my mom, my sisters, and we drove to Seattle, so we drove from Canada to Seattle. And I just remember that whole drive, it was like super somber. Cause we'd just been through like the most traumatic thing and it was kind of like, where do we even go from here? Like, are we going back? Can we go back to that? That, but that was like the first time where I just realized I'm like, things are really gonna change now. And like, I knew I, I don't know. It's like somehow I knew that I could make my life what I wanted it to be. I think that's why I, like, I attribute all that to why I'm so tough and like so mentally solid. So that's, if people want to know the secret. You can't buy that in stores. <laughs> no, yeah. You can't buy that in stores. <laughs> oh. And then, yeah, that's where my neighbor comes in. You're rolling? Yeah. OK. She uh, had a lot of dreams and a lot of hopes, and she wanted to do a lot of things. And I remember not being that motivated when I was a kid, so I was really impressed by her. Yeah. You went to nursing school with my old roommate. Remember? Uh, yes. Brittany. Brittany. Yeah. yeah. And she's got the triplets now. Yeah. Oh my, God. my family, we were always runners. We always grew up running. And so I was telling Sky's parents about it, and they said, that is so something that Sky would want to do. And so her mom was like, would you want to <laughs> like see if she, could she come around with you? And I was like, well, yeah, of course. I'd love to have somebody to run with. So okay. here's where it started. That was the, the 
before. We would run in the evenings, and then that escalated to her. She decided she was going to train for the Salt Lake City Marathon, and then she just said, well, do you want to do the Salt Lake City Marathon with me? There's me, there's Heidi. I think that the idea was something that Sky was totally excited about. I remember, I remember like the morning of the marathon, and my mom just being like, Sky, this is really cool that you're doing this. Like, this is a big accomplishment. I, I'm not super fast runner, and she ran most of the way with me until like the last mile, and she just sort of took off, and she was so fast. Okay, I put in my time with this girl. I'm gonna go. There's the finish. Yep. You just took off that last mile. You were just. I were... do remember. My parents came up and cheered. Heidi's husband was there cheering. Like it was just this really happy, positive experience. That was fun, and I did kind of good. She was just so kind to me and really exposed me to running long distance. I was, I'm like really lucky that I had her. I don't, I don't know how else I would have gotten into endurance sport. And here I am, one of the top ranked people in the world, you know? Being Team US number one, I mean, it means a lot to, to know that I'm the best performing American female right now. But I also know there's so much talent. As much as I love being number one in the US, I know there's a lot of work to do, and I know how tough the racing is. I want to race at the Collins Cup because the best athletes are going to be there. And racing the best athletes is where you can show how good you are. When you, when you stack yourself up against the best is when you can show and you see where you're really at. Upon the altar, I'm in blue. I know that I will race a European and I will race someone from Team International. But I will say I would also love to race Katrina Matthews because I need to beat her. She's beat me. I need to beat her fair and square. I'm always open and excited to race anyone, but it's a little more fun when you can, when you got like a personal reason. As much as, yeah, by the numbers, we're the underdogs, anything can happen. I would define an underdog as someone who's not expected to perform and who's just kind of written off. I've been an underdog. I love that that's the position I was put into because I'm not like afraid of anything. I know I can do anything I want to do. The inaugural Collins Cup. You do not want to miss this.